Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to show you how to work with arrays. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you how to work with arrays. And yeah, so arrays are basically a way for you to store multiple variable values into one variable, basically. Okay, so an array is a collection of elements grouped into one like variable. It's not actually a variable. I wouldn't call it a variable. Uh, well, I would, but it's not actually a variable, I don't think, but it pretty much is, okay? So it's a variable that holds other variables, right, into one variable, basically. So let me just show you a theoretical situation, okay? So let's say you're creating something and you wanna ask someone or ask the user for a bunch of numbers, right? And let's say you ask the user for five numbers, right? Five random numbers that they can come up with, okay? So uh, int num1, and then we just give it a value of zero because the user hasn't provided their own number yet. Num2 is equal to zero. Num3 is equal to zero. Wait, did I say four or five? I don't even know what I said. Okay. So anyway, we're making these variables so that we can store the values that they provide once we ask them. So right here, we would ask the user just pretend that we're doing that, okay? So then we store it into here, right? But let's say that we make this program way bigger and we ask the user for about 5,000 um, random numbers, right? Or something like that. For just any situation where we need a bunch of numbers, um, a bunch of variables, right? We wouldn't, it's not really realistic that we would create 5,000 of these right here, right? That would be, take way too long and that would just be really painful and not very productive, right? Not very uh, smart, efficient, not very efficient, right? So there's an easier way to do that with arrays. So we can just create an array of that, okay? So an array is gonna be able to store all 5,000 into one uh, variable that we can reference basically, okay? So to create an array, we could simply give it, we need a data type, okay? So we can hold any data type that we wanna give it. So we can do integer, double, float, strings even, uh, anything, anything like that, right? So let's do integers just to keep it simple. And we're gonna give it a name of numbers because we're gonna hold a bunch of numbers like I said before, right? That's our example. So we're holding a bunch of numbers and let's say we wanna hold um, 50 numbers okay so that's how you tell the array how many elements are going to gonna be inside of the array and an element is basically one variable inside the array one value okay so this array is going to hold 50 integers right and so now inside of here inside of these curly brackets we can put um, we can initialize the values if we want to okay so you don't actually have to we can leave it blank and so if we leave it blank what this is going to do is make 50 integers all with the value of zero because we did not provide any initializing values so it's just going to make it zero by default okay so it's going to create inside of this array 50 integers right so that's pretty cool and uh so yeah that's awesome right so now we just created a bunch of um, numbers here and then we could ask the user in our theoretical program to provide 50 random numbers and then we can assign it to this array right so this array is really useful for storing a bunch of values that we otherwise didn't want to make all by ourselves right we didn't have to type out 50 integers right now we can just create it all at one go, right? Pretty cool. Hopefully you like that. Hopefully you see the use in that like I do. And so now let me show you how to initialize it a different way, okay? So let's say we're going to make another array. So number two, and let's give it, uh, let's say uh, we want to choose, now it's going to have six integers in this array, okay? So this array is going to hold six integers and we can actually initialize the values that are in this array. We can say that we can basically provide um, some default values for our elements and our integers in our array. If you want to, you don't have to because the first time we didn't, so this time we don't actually have to if you don't want to. But let me just show you. So we can do 12, 34, uh, 5, 7, and 123. So these are just random numbers I just made up. And now, um, basically what this line of code does is it creates an array. So it's gonna create six integers and put it inside of this array here. And then each of these integers is gonna have a value. The first one's gonna have 12, the second one's gonna have 34, the third one's gonna have five, and this fourth one's gonna have seven, and the fifth one's gonna have 123. So as you can see here, we have six integers, right? Oh wait, I need one more, obviously, if it's gonna be six, right? Uh, wait, can I count? No, I can't count. That's weird, okay. Well, let's just put a random number here, we'll put four. Sorry, I can't count. It's three in the morning, obviously, as you can see my time down here. But anyway, that's just another way you can initialize an array if you want to, so six uh, elements, with initialize, right? Okay, so if you want to, you can just provide some partial initialization, meaning that you can provide um, the default values for only, you know, a certain part of the arrays that, I mean, of the integers that you're making. So let me show you. 
So we can do an int numbers three, and we could say seven, so it's gonna hold seven. And let's say we only know the values of the first three, um, or the first two elements, okay? So that's okay, we can just provide nine and two. And so what this is gonna do is basically the first two elements are initialized with the values that we provided, nine and two, but the rest are defaulted to zero. Okay. All right, it's better to type it so you can see exactly what I'm trying to explain here. It's just better for your, for my mind at least. But anyway, so the, that's how that works. If you want to, if you want to mix these two and then just do half of it or well, two of them out of seven, then you can do that if you want to. Okay. So that's how you initialize an array. That's how you create an array. So like kind of like we have here, if you know all of the um, the values of the array ahead of time, if you know exactly what's going to be in the array, if you know how many numbers are going to be in the array ahead of time, if you know all of them, then you don't actually need to provide a number here. You can leave it blank. So let me show you. So we could do int numbers array, and then we could say, well, we just leave it blank, right? Is equal to, and then if we know all of them, if we know, well, let me just type it in. So 45, 12, and four, like that. So um, that's all of the values that are going to be in our array, right? So we don't want it to be bigger than three. We don't want it to be less. We want we don't want it to be less than three. So we're just going to leave it like that. Okay. So now this array is going to be three because of course we have one, two, three here. So it's just going to assume that the array is going to be the size of three because there's three inside of it, basically. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So it assumes from the initialized amount, basically. Okay. So that's what that's going to do. And then also we can use, we don't have to use just integers. Like I told you, we can also do strings if you want to. So we can do string words. So we can make an array of words if you want to like this. We can say booty clappers like that if you want to. And so that's how you do that. But um, that's how you create an array. Like I said, these are all the different ways you can create an array. Pretty cool. That's called initializing an array. So all of these arrays that we are creating here are all static, by the way, meaning they cannot change ever. So um, the size can never change, but the, you know, the values of the array can change, but not the size. The size can never change. The size always stays the same or the length, you know, whatever, same thing. But uh, yeah, so now let's move on to indexing arrays and how to access arrays and stuff like that, the juicy part. Um, so arrays are zero based. So arrays are zero based. So that means that every um, time you make an array, the first um, element in the array is going to start at zero, okay? Because you have to know that, so basically each element inside of an array is going to have a number, kind of like we did last episode with the enumerations. Each element in the array is going to have a number because um, uh, we need to access the elements in the array sometimes, right? If we want to access, you know, the first element in this numbers two array, then that's going to be zero. Oh, I'll show you in a second, okay? So let me just go and show you. Let's create a new, a new array here. So we're going to make string books list. And we're going to have four books in this books list here. So string books list is equal to, let's open this up here. Then we can say um, our first book is going to be titled Unbroken. Okay. And then our second title is going to be Can't Hurt Me. And then The Godfather. And then finally, our last one, because we have four, as you can see here, our size is four, supermarket, okay? So these are our four books in our books list array here. Let's uh, put a semicolon there. And so the way this would work, um, we ha they all have a index, right? So these are all elements, zero, one, two, three, four. That's how you would index all the elements inside of the array. So this first one would be zero, second one is one, this one's two, this one's four, okay? So don't get me wrong, there's still four elements inside of this array, but they're indexed in the way that it starts at zero. It's zero based, right? So zero, one, two, three. Oh, I meant three, sorry, not four, three. So zero, one, two, three, okay? So that's the size is four, but the index is zero, one, two, three, because it's zero based, right? I just wanna make that clear for you. So now that we understand how an array is um, zero based and how to you know index an array, we can actually access the values of the array be with their index values, okay? So let me go, go ahead and show you. So we can do C out. Um, this is the third book. And so let's say we want to print out the third book. To, the way we would do that is by doing books list. So the name of the array. And then inside of this, um, inside of these brackets here, we would put the index that we want to access the value of. Okay. So we want the third book, right? So zero, one, two. Okay. 
So that would be 0, 1, 2, the third book. So we would just put 2 inside of here, the index of the one that we want to access. And then now we can print that out right there. There we go. So now let's run this and see what we get. So now it says this is the third book, The Godfather, right? So 0, 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3, and we get The Godfather, which is the third book, right? So, so hopefully that makes sense for you. That's how you access the value of an array. Any array, not just strings, of course. You can do any data type. So that's how you access it, but let me show you how to change the value in an array because I told you the size of an array can never change because it's static, but the values of the arrays can change, okay? So we can change the, the name of um, any of these titles here if we want to. So we could do um, something like this. Let's do books list, and let's change the first one. So zero, books list zero is equal to booty. Okay, so now let's print out that value. Let's just put it right here because I'm lazy. So we're going to put zero and see what we get. Oh wait, it's going to stay the same because well, it was going to be unbroken because uh, this line of code become or is after this line of code. So let's just copy and paste it like that. Rerun this here. Now we get this is the third book booty. Okay, pretty cool. It's actually the zero, the first book, but whatever. So anyway, that's how that works. Um, but let me show you how to. Let's just pull up another example here. Let's just create a new array. So into ages. And so this is an array that's going to hold a bunch of ages for some reason. So 13, 17, 12, 134, because this person's really old. And then 67, okay. Um, I don't even know how this person's alive still, but he is. And so let's say that one day um, he ages, right? He goes, he has a birthday, right? So his his uh, age is going to go up by one. So let's say we need, we need to change it, right? So let's put the initial value first, so ages. Inside of here we need to, so we need to put the actual index, of course. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's put 3 like that. There we go. Okay, now we'll change it now. So we can change it because he had a birthday, so we need to make it one larger than before. So ages is equal to, or ages 3, is equal to ages 3 plus 1, like that. And so now um, it should be changed. So now let's print it out again so we can see the new value. So ages three in line. Okay. So let's see if that works. So now we get 134 and then 135 because he has a birthday and it changes, right? So that's how you, again, that's again how you change the value of a element inside of an array. So one more thing I want to show you before we go is a cool little trick to see the size of an array so we can know how much um, memory it's taking up within our computer basically. So yeah, we would do that with the size of function that I showed you before, like two episodes ago. So let's try doing that. So we'll do, um, well basically let me explain it first, okay? So basically to, the way we would find the amount of memory that this array takes up is we know that each um, element inside of this array is going to be integer, right? Because we're saying integer. And be from before we can get the size of an integer. So all we got to do is get the size of this array. So about zero, I mean, one, two, three, four, five. So five elements. And then we're going to do five times the size of integer because we know that integer, each integer is going to be the same size, right? So we can do five times integer and that's going to provide the size of our array basically. Okay. So we can do that with any other data type also, except for string maybe because string um, strings are going to be different in size depending on how many characters you use, but I think that makes sense for you. So let's just, let's just go ahead and uh, try that out. So we'll do C out, and we're going to say size of the age array. Okay, just like that. And we'll do size, yeah, size of integer times five. Okay, and then finally inline. Or no, we'll provide the unit okay in line okay so let's see what happens when we do that okay let's print that out so we, get, we should get 20 but yeah so the size of the array is equal to 20 bytes so yeah that's pretty good and that makes sense that's because of course if you remember from two episodes ago the size of an integer is going to be four bytes so four times five is 20. so yeah hopefully that you understand that but um, if you have any questions about what I did today, what I showed you with the arrays, you can ask a question in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or you can join our Discord. We have a Discord link in the description below if you want to click the link and then join our Discord. 
We have about 200 people, so if you have any questions, you could ask questions, and they'll try and help you. Or just hang out with us, anything you want to do, if you, if you want to talk to us, you know, anything like that. Um, yeah, so if, also, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description description below, too, so make sure you click that link and then bookmark it for future use in case you forget how to do any of this, because I'll leave the comments there for you, much more detailed, I'll leave that for you in the description, so, anyway, just check it out. And so, if you like this video, leave a like, if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.